Welcome, Pastor Sam, everybody. Welcome, Pastor Sam. Praise the Lord. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome testimonies. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says we overcame with the blood of the Lamb and with the word of our testimony. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank God. We're going to be taking our testimonies on Fridays. Please, if you have testimony, give it to Minister Roxanne. Everybody know Minister Roxanne? Yep, that's Minister Roxanne right there. Please give it to her. We used to do this. And now that we've resumed our Friday service in person, uh, we will continue to do Friday night testimonies. Amen. So just give it to Minister Roxanne. Praise the God. Amen. Praise the worship was also good today. Amen. Amen. We also miss Lady Corrine. She's traveling. Uh, she should be back next week. She should be back next week. It would be awesome to have both of them minister. Uh, it's going to be something. Amen. Glory to God. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, our not first time, but second time guest, Tony. I remember how she came the, on the Sunday before, right? Yeah, I greet you all. There are a few things I would like to do today. Is that okay? Amen. I want to answer some questions, not from you guys. The topic is a question. Why do people suffer from financial bondage? Remember we started when? Last week. I want to go through it quick. I'll be giving you the reason. Please make note. Please make note of the information that I'm giving so you can make adjustment, make correction. Even those that are viewing uh, uh, on Facebook, uh, uh, make adjustment. Then after that, I want to also give you steps to financial freedom. Steps to financial freedom. I guarantee you, if you follow this, things will change in your life financially. You'll be doing great. Amen? Then after that, we're going to pray. How many are excited for that? There shall be fire prayer tonight. In Jesus' name. I believe in prayer. Amen. We are praying, church. Glory to God. We're going to be praying. Powerful prayer. Amen. I gave you a few last week. Why do people suffer from financial bondage? Number one, we will go swiftly. Generational cause. Generational cause. Any issue in the bloodline, it needs to be addressed. As soon as you address it properly, I truly believe things will change. Because really, Jesus has paid the price for us on the cross. What we are doing is to execute what Christ has already done. Amen. Can I hear amen? Number two, wrong foundation. Wrong foundation. Whatever you are doing, make sure you do it right. Follow the principles and the precept. If it's your job or business or project that you are working on, don't rush to do it. Amen? Get a mentor. Amen? In other words, someone has done this before. Or, or someone that is doing what you are about to do that can advise you and give you proper instruction how to start. Very important. I know we're always rushing to start. Amen. The beginning is actually more important than the rest of the project you want to do. Because based on the foundation, then you can build. Wrong foundation. Wrong business foundation. Or wrong academic foundation. Wrong certificate. Also wrong marital foundation. We result to problem. 
will resort to financial bondage. Amen? Right foundation. We want to get, do what? In business, we call it DD. Due diligence. Do your research. Amen. Acquire knowledge. Amen. Talk to people that are ahead you, ahead of you. You got to submit yourself to somebody that know what you want to do, or that have done what you want to do. And you hear what I'm saying? I met a young man yesterday. Young man, probably late thirty or forty. I met with him. We were talking. He says, "Sir, you see that building over there? That is my building. I own all those buildings." I said, really, Northeast Washington, D.C. I said, really? I said, how do you acquire all of this? Listen to what the young man told me. He said, I started working for a company. He said, you're always good to learn from others. That's what I was telling him. He said, I started for this company. What they do, they buy property. They refurbish property and they rent it out. He said, I was there for many years, but I learned so much from them. So one day, I just decided to try it on my own. Can you hear what I'm saying? To try it on my own. And sir, it works for me. That's why I own all these buildings. So I said, how many apartments do you have? About Is it 100 apartment buildings? This is my point. He had good foundation. He started from somewhere. He learned from somebody. Amen. He acquired knowledge. Amen. Don't always rush to start. You got to learn. Amen. You have to be teachable. Hello? We have to be what? Teachable. Submit yourself to someone that know what you are about to do so you can get good foundation. He works for them. He know how to acquire the building to buy real estate. He know how to get loan finances. He said, that's what I want. He said, I used to live in D.C., but I don't live in D.C. anymore. Me and my family, we live in New York. I just came to see my property. Young man, late 30 or early 40. Is you have learned for many years. So then I decided to start my own. Don't rush to start. You must have good foundation. Can I hear amen? You know what David said? The scripture said, he said, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Come on, talk to me, church. What can you do? If the foundation is destroyed, Spend time on the foundation. Submit yourself to somebody and be teachable and learn. Amen, somebody. Wrong business foundation. Wrong academic foundation. Wrong certificate. Wrong marital foundation and more. Number three. Too much responsibilities. Too much responsibility. I like when the church is quiet. What is your responsibility? It could be one, it could be two, it could be three, but don't make it too much. You want to focus on your own assignment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if you have so much rest responsibilities, that means you have to split your time and your money for each responsibility. Responsibility will take you money or and time. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And time is what? And money is what? Amen. You have to focus. Because I know if you have too much responsibility, 
That means you don't know which one God wants you to do. Do what God wants you to do. Amen. Yes ago we talked about purpose. Is it last year? Anybody remember? I taught on purpose. What is your purpose? What is your assignment? What is your responsibility? It could be two, it could be three, it could be four. But God will not give you what you cannot handle. I can tell you that. Remember the, 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 the story about in the Bible about the talent. I mean, remember that? He gave one how many? He gave the other one how many? And the last one why? How many? Why? What? He gave one how many? Five? And the other one what? And the other one what? How come he didn't give them equally? The Bible said he gave them what? According to their ability. Not only that, he knows them. He knows their ability. Amen. So he gave one five. Yeah, you can have five responsibility if you have the ability. Hello? But I know you have two purposes. I mean five purposes. You can have two. Is it because the master he knows their what their ability? Are you hearing me? Not too much responsibility. Let's go quick. Number four, unwise investment. Number five, living beyond your means. Living beyond your means. Number, let me give you the next one. Is that six? Wrong job. Wrong business. Hello? Wrong job or wrong business. Now, if you discover that you have a wrong job, don't just quit. Don't just quit. Find another one before you quit. Amen? Glory to God. Wrong job. You can have a job and God bless you and you are successful in that same job. It don't have to be a business. Can I give you another wisdom? If you have a job and there's no future, find another job with future. Oh God, I'm trying not to teach today. If you have a job without future, find a job with what? Future. Amen? Let's say you have a job now, you're just doing it to make money. It's okay to keep you going. But find something that will have a future. Don't always look for now. You want to get a job that you will grow into, become a manager, become a general manager. Become a part owner. It must have a future. Amen. If it was a business, it must have a future. Amen. You must get something where you can want grow. That have a what? Future. Don't just get a job to get by. Maybe if this is tough, you can start to get by. But have in mind, I have to get something that has what? Future. You always think about your future. Amen. And even if it's business, you must have a what? Future. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Wrong job. Wrong business. Imagine many people are doing wrong jobs, wrong businesses, and they are praying for God to bless that business. Even some of them are fasting. Hello? <laughs> Will God bless that? God didn't tell you to do it. Amen. And that's why I want to rush today to get to solution and give you some important things to do. That's the meat of this 
topic. I have to get there today. Can I hear amen? amen. Wrong job, wrong business. Must get a job that has what? Future. A business that has a what? Future. Not just for one year, for two years, for future. That even you can give it over to your children. To your children, children. Hallelujah. I know some of you are not thinking that way. Just thinking about well, just to make it till May. I want to change the way you think. I want to start thinking big and thinking future. Amen. And I understand if you have to do something now to get something, another job with future. It's all right. But don't stay there too long. Amen. I say amen. amen. Wrong job, wrong foundation. The next one, lack of savings. Lack of savings. Don't worry, in this ministry, I will impart, I always like to impart knowledge, not just fire, 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 fire. And the end of the fire all remains. Fire is good. I like fire. Amen. Sometimes I like to scream and to shout. Fire is good. But we must impart knowledge. Amen. Lack of saving. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But I know a lot of people don't have savings. You must. We cannot live off of 100% of our income. This church is quiet. I love that. Pastor Masha, they're quiet today. You must have a what? Savings. You must have investment. It's your saving you invest. Don't worry about it. It's too small. Amen. It could be every paycheck you pull, put away how much? $50. How many can do that? Hundred dollar, two hundred dollar. See, I see those the, the amount of hands are going down. It's okay if you cannot do that. Start from somewhere. It's okay if you can only do twenty five dollar for now. Actually, I can teach you how you can do more. Can I? I don't know. Maybe not another message. Actually. Debt reduction. That's what you need to do. Cut your bills. Debt reduction. I don't think I did. I did it before my wife would tell you years back. Years back, we were, at the time we were living in Mitchellville. Not nice house. Big house, you know. Then we have cable. You know, cable box in our bedroom, cable box in the family room, cable box in the basement, cable box, thank you, in the study. I put it there so when I'm in the studies working a little bit, I can check the news and see basketball. Cable box. I mean, I mean that. Four cable box. They're not free. They charge you. Every month. <laughs> Hello. I'm talking to the church today. Everybody's quiet. I think this is a Sunday message. Amen. So everything was there. Then one day, I just take the bill. We were making a lot of money. Actually, we were saving good an amount of money. It just struck me one day. Say, wait a minute. Then on Sunday, we go to church. And I have, we, we have NFL, what do you call it then? NFL package. How do you know that? No, we call it NFL pass. NFL pass. Who know what was that? NFL pass, that means you can see all the football game that is playing all over in America. And they play on Sunday. And Sunday morning, I'm in the church. So who's watching that? Even if you are laughing at me, I know I'm just setting you up so I can come talk to you too. 
I hear what they're saying. NFL, it's Sunday, everybody playing, but I'm here in church. Why do I have that? They also find out that we have HBO. I don't even have time to watch HBO. Movie, I don't watch movie, honest. Then we have HBO 1, HBO 2, HBO 3. Then we have Cinemax. Cinemax 1, Cinemax 2, Cinemax 3. Then we have another one. Show, oh God, how do you know? Do you have some? <laughs> Then Showtime 1, Showtime 2. I mean, we're working so hard and we're just paying these people for nothing. I can understand if I'm watching it. I don't even have time. This stands me to own a home health agency. We are there in the office all day. And then we are paying these people. Oh, I'm asking, shh, don't watch TV. We have nothing for Simon and Diamond. She don't watch TV. She don't even, her English is not, you know. It's not all that. She don't understand much English. Why? You can save more. You know what I did? Come, come on, prophesy. That's what I did. I called them. And I told them, what do you mean? I only need one box. <laughs> The one in the bedroom, we don't in the bedroom, we are sleeping. Come take your box. The basement, come take it. The study, come take it. We only need one. Oh, no, Mr. Fatoki, you know. I said, no, come take your stuff. Then I went to our credit cards. <laughs> oh, cinemas and everything. One, cinemas must go. Everything. HBO must go. One, two, three, four, five, six must go. All of it must go. Are you hearing me? Am I making sense? You can do that. Your savings, you are giving it to these people. There's some things you can do without. There's a lot of things you can do without. I cut off all of those things. Even though we were doing well, those days we have the money, we were in full time in business, we were saving a lot of money, but that doesn't mean I should be giving money away. Are you hearing me? We got all of that. Even credit card. We kept maybe one or two, especially the one they call MasterCard. You know why they call it MasterCard? Because it ain't yours. <laughs> the card belongs to the master. <laughs> you know what? You are working for the. I say no more. I will not work for the master anymore. I'm going to work for myself. That's what they call the master card. I will show you scripture. Is it a borrower? Is a slave or servant to the lender? Anytime I think about that, I don't like it. A borrower is a servant to the lender. So if you have 10 credit cards, how many masters? <laughs> Let me continue. But you, you understand what I'm saying here. Come on, how many understand? That's what scripture said. Amen. And those days in the past, uh, me too, I used to show off with my friends. I just put my wallet, open my wallet so they can see the MasterCard. <laughs> so you can open it up, you just put it on the table, they can see that you have a lot of credit card. It's not just. You know, you should I say, man, Sammy, man, you have, wow, credit card. It's not yours, it's not mine. It belongs to the master. Amen. All right, let me move swiftly. Wrong job. Lack of savings. How do you save? There are two ways you can save. Debt reduction. Debt reduction. Reduce those bills. There's some things you can do without. Let them go. 
There's some things you don't really need. Let them go. That's number one. Debt reduction. Number two, increase income. Increase income. Amen? Let's go quick. Let me give you another one. You have most people are in bondage. When you have more expenditure than income. More expenditure than income. Amen? Remember, I gave you an assignment last week. Anybody did the assignment? You did it? Oh, Nehemiah. Yeah, that was Nehemiah. But Friday, I gave you an assignment. You did yours? Eh? Ready, have it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Who did it? Eh? The, remember, it's, it's budgeting. And what you want to do, everybody know their income? When I asked last week, it's only, look as if only Lady Koran know their expenses. I mean, know their expenses. You know it now or you know it before? Do you, can you tell me the amount? I know you know it, but what's the total amount? Aha. I, I, I like this teaching. This is not the fire teaching today. You know your income. If I ask you your income, you tell me, for example, $10. What is your expenses? How much? Now, now, thank God you know it, but it's not supposed to be $10. Remember I gave you a budget, a formula? 10, 20, 70. I just give you a budget. That's a budget. 10, 20, 70. 10% tithe, 20%. Savings and 70%. Amen. Some people looking down. Look at me. Amen. So the sister, I will mention your name because of the people on the Facebook so they don't know. If it's 10 10, that means you don't have a saving. Amen. But you can do it. How? Two ways. Debt deduction, reduction, and then deduction. And then what? Increase income. Amen? Amen. I'll do this quick. Another one. Stealing from God. Not paying your tithe and giving. Stealing from God by not giving your tithe and offering. We put you in financial bondage. And the church say, Amen. Amen. We must pay our tithe. It doesn't matter how small it is. It is a practice that we need to follow. I told you through the Bible, I see all the men of God, women of God, they always give back to God. Amen. They always give back to God. Next one, failure to honor pledges. Ah! Failure to honor pledges. If you pledge that you're going to give something, please give it. It can put you in financial bondage. Next one, disobedience to God's leading. I'm going to do quick, 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 quick. Living, next one, living in debt. Too much debt. Too much bills. Proverbs 22, 7 said, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. Now what God wants to do, He wants to flip it for us to be lender and for the world to be what? Borrower. 
Proverbs 22, 7. Say the rich will rule over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Next one, negative confession. Ah, please. Negative confession. You are not poor. You are rich. Never confess that you are poor. You are rich. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. Even if you don't have it in your pocket or in your bank, you are rich. Amen. What we speak out from our mouth is very powerful. Don't speak negative. Amen. Amen. You are rich. You are strong. You are blessed. You are anointed. Amen. Oh, she said amen too. Amen. Negative confession. Please be careful. Next one, demonic activities. Demonic activities. Demonic activities. It will affect your, put you in bondage financially. Another one, laziness. Laziness. Thank God there's no one lazy in this place. Can I hear amen? But laziness, the Bible call it slothfulness. Is the same thing. Also, satanic covenant. You don't want to miss Sunday morning. 10 a.m., we're going to be teaching a little bit about that. Covenant. If you have been to a place in the past before you get saved and you engage in covenant, although you're not doing anymore, that doesn't mean it's broken. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's broken. Those spirit still follows you. It doesn't mean, even though you stop, you are safe, it has to be broken. Amen? Amen. All right, now, this is the main. How of steps? Let's do this quick. I want us to pray. Steps to financial freedom. Number one. If there's a covenant or generational cause, you must aggressively and violently deal with the power of poverty. It is a power that needs to be broken aggressively because those spirits are stubborn. For a few minutes, we're going to do that today. That's what I want to get to, to address those issues. We must aggressively, aggressively and violently deal with the power of poverty. That's number one. Number two. This is our step to be free from, step to financially free, to receive financial freedom. We deal with it, that prayer. Number two, very important. You must not never allow money to be number one in your life. I thought I'm going to get a loud amen for that. You must never allow money to be number one in your life. You have to understand the principles of ownership and stewardship. I believe I've talked about that here before. 
There are also three things you need to know. You don't want to be materialistic. Spirit of materialism. Then the principle of ownership and stewardship. I'm telling you, when you follow those three principles that I just gave now, God will bless you exceedingly and abundantly. Materialism. It can become an idol. Idol worshiping is not just getting a calf image and bow down every day. Anything you put before God is an idol. Money can be an idol. Material things can be an idol. Car can be an idol. House can be an idol. If you put it forth before God. That's why God says, I am a jealous God. He's not jealous of us. Come on, church. He's not jealous of us. He's jealous when you put anything forth before him. Amen. That's why he tested Abraham. He told Abraham to go sacrifice his son. He tested him. Now I've given you what you want. Now you want to prove him. Do you still love me? I am still, am I still forced in your life or now it's your son? That's why God sent him to Mount Moriah to go sacrifice that boy. It was testing him. God wants to see where is your heart? Is your heart still with me? Or now he has shifted. Yes, some people God bless them, their heart shift. You can move your heart from the giver and put your heart in the gift. No. Very important. There are three things those days. Actually, there's a message I have, a series that I taught in the past. Three things. Materialism, be careful. Number two. No, no, not, not here. I'll give you this one. It's a message I'm talking about too that just came. I didn't have that here. It's the principle of ownership. That's why people struggle with paying their tithe because they don't understand that principle. Amen. The principle of ownership says that everything that you have comes from God and belong to God. When you understand that principle, you will not have problem to give 10%. Because we always think the 100% is mine. I work for it. It's my money. No. Christian, we don't think like that. Everything that I have comes from God and it belongs to God. Hello? Amen. So during the time for tithe and offering, you should be excited. You give him back what belongs to him. Oh God, can I talk to you for a few more minutes? 100% of what you have belongs to God. Okay, nobody say amen. Well, 100% that I have, that I have belongs to God. It comes from God. It belongs to God. So I don't have a problem give 10%. Even sometimes I will give 20%. Okay, few people are not saying amen. When you understand that principle, it's very powerful. That everything belongs to God. 100% belongs to God. I said to myself, this God is a good God. Out of 100%, all he wants for me to give is 10%. Why are you struggling to give ten percent? Because you don't understand that principle. You think the money is yours, ain't yours. Tell her you laughing. It's not yours. That money you get it belongs to God. It comes from God and it belongs to God. Amen. 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 I want you to get excited. Amen. Because when you understand this principle that you are not the owner, he is the owner. Hey, he is the owner. When you understand and you practice it, God will trust you with finances. 
I'm serious. That's why God don't trust a lot of us with finances. The moment you get it, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. I'm not going to give it. It's mine. I need to buy this new shoe, new car, new this, new that. It's mine. And yours, it belongs to God. And it comes from God. When you have that, believe that principle, you are just a steward. Over here, there's no amen. I only get two amen here. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to, you got to shout a loud amen. amen. God is the owner. Can we say amen? amen. I am a steward. Amen. God is the owner. The owner has 100% right. <laughs> a few amen here again. The owner has what? 100% right. You have no right. <laughs> You want financial breakthrough? You have to understand this principle. If you don't understand you, there's nothing breaking. Finances. It's not going to break. God is a smart God. He wants to see where's your heart. He don't want to give you money and you begin to worship that money. The money becomes an idol. So we have to understand this principle of ownership. God is the owner. Amen? Um, I am the what? Steward. The owner has the right. Steward has no right. And steward, <laughs> we're laughing. You don't have no right <laughs> because it's not your money. Let me give you a good example in the, in the scripture. When Jesus, actually that story was talking about Jesus. the teaching on stewardship. They say he called his servants and he gave them what? Five talents, two, and one. Go read that scripture. That was his money. Amen? That was his money. He gave to them. He is the owner. They are the one. Steward. That was his money. The owner have what? Right. 100% right. The steward has no right. But the steward has to be what? Accountable to the owner. Maybe I need to come back with a series on finances and the principle of the kingdom. I'm telling you. When you understand it, you practice it, God trusts you, breakthrough will be coming your way. I'm telling you, he will make you a financier of the kingdom of God. If somebody's heart is not with God, it's in money. If you give us too much money and you get that breakthrough, some people, they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. It's my money. It's my money. No. It's not your money. It's his money. Can I hear amen? Amen. It's his money. When you have understand that, God will give you he make you what? Financier of the kingdom of God. What that mean? He will make you a conduit. A conduit. In other words, somebody that he trusts to give the money to and he will bless everybody else. Amen. Amen can do that. Amen want God to bring them financier of the kingdom. Amen. If you, shall, if you lift your hand, do you believe that God is the owner? You are not the owner. You are a steward, and God is the owner. When you understand that principle, I assure you, God will put money in your hands because we need money in the end time to preach the gospel, to go all over the world. So God is looking for financier of the kingdom of God from people that He can trust. Amen. God don't go around and give money, big money to everybody. No, He don't do that. You know what He told Abraham? Take me too much time. He said, I will bless you. You know why? He trusted Abraham because he attested Abraham. He knew where Abraham's heart is. He trusted. He said, If I bless you, you will bless others. Do you know why Abraham's breakthrough took so long? The 
Vous avez bien Do you know why? Lot and Lot was greedy. I'll prove it to you. You want to hear it? Lot was a what? Was a greedy man. You see the scripture? He was greed, greedy. He loved material things. Materialism. What I just told you to be careful for. He loved that. That's why God, when God told him to leave his family, God didn't tell Abraham to bring Lot with him. Did he tell him to do that? No. The only person Abraham had the right to carry is his wife, his boo. His boo, his wife. Amen? He said, leave your family. Leave and go to a place I didn't show you. God is very smart. How come God didn't tell you where he's going to show him? The land. Because God knew that Abraham is going to took Lot with him. Abraham didn't receive breakthrough until when? When you read that scripture, the Bible says, after Lot left, God said, lift up your eyes and look. Can I prove to you why Lot, when I say he was greedy, who chose first? Why? Who's supposed to choose first? Abraham was a visionary. Lord follow Abraham. Amen. Lord, Abraham was the man of God. It was his family member, but that doesn't mean you choose first. He chose first based on what? Come on, talk to me, George. You can talk. It's for what? Read your Bible now. It's so what? It's so it was worldly attraction. He saw Sodom and Gomorrah. You forgot? Based on what he saw. Sodom and Gomorrah. Worldly attraction. The Bible says, look, say, my, my, my. You see this high? You don't choose with your height, you choose with your spirit. Amen. Not with height. Amen. Jesus said, if your eyes are going to cause you not to enter. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let, let me finish. I'm going a little bit too deep. Amen. But remember that principle. Materialism. Don't be materialistic. Amen? Second, ownership. Amen? God is the owner. If you get paid today, that money, God is the owner. All you want is 10%. Amen? The church is quiet. And then, stewardship. Can I say Stewardship. Years ago, the Lord told me that I should teach the church. I thought, if you remember, budgeting and how to spend your 90. You remember that? There are five steps. The Lord told me that uh, we pastors and apostle preacher, we always talk about the 10. Bring your 10, bring your 10, bring your 10, but not teaching them how to be a good steward on the 90. We remember that teaching. Yes. Teach your 90. How you spend your 90 also is very important. You must spend it wisely. The 90 still belongs to God. But it's for you to spend, to take care of your family. We always talk about 10, 10%. Give your 10, give your 10, give your 10. If you give your 10, God will bless you. If you give your 10, you're going to get a miracle. Is that so? <laughs> I will change your theology the way you think. Your income is what? 10% or 100%? The 100%, you have to be steward over the 100%, not only 10%. 
and now they don't teach us that. You have to be steward, not only the 10 and also what? The 90. God will not only bless you because of the 10. Aha. No. He will not only bless you because, because if Andre belongs to him and you're only faithful and good steward on the 10 and you're not good steward on the 90, 90%. All right. So number two, you must never allow money to be number one in your life. Avoid too much debt. A debtor is always a slave to thee. Moreover, the next one, I'm going to fast. Seek God leading in what you do. Always seek God. Amen. If you're looking for a job, ask God, pray for God to lead you. For business, ask God to lead you. See God leading in what you do. Do not just embank and back on things. Pray and get a divine leading before you start. Get a what? Divine leading before you start. Romans 8.14 he said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, are they? Be led by God. Go to school. You want to go to school? Be led by God. Business? Be led by God. Job? Be led by God. If you want to get married? Be led by God. Amen? Let God lead you who to marry. Pray about it. Amen? Don't just look for handsome or beautiful. Beauty is from inside out, not outside in. <laughs> Amen? Be led by the Spirit. Which job, which business, whatever we want to do, we have to be led by the Spirit. Next one. High integrity and honesty must be in everything that you do. That's what we call in business teaching the golden rules. The golden rules. Can we say that? The golden rules. Our integrity and honesty must be in everything that you do so that you can be financially free. The golden rule in business do unto others. As you want others to do unto you. Unto you. I do a lot of transactions. I do a lot of projects. You can't cheat me. Hello? You cannot. Because I don't cheat others. You cannot. I can tell you stories about transactions. They try to cheat me. I told my wife, look at them. And God was showing them to me. I was working on this transaction years back. Big transaction. And I was, the transaction actually closed. The partner told me it didn't close. And I was in the house. Chaka, pa, 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 take it. Take it, take it, I was praying fire. Fire prayer. Watch this. Upstairs. Praying fire prayer. One day, God gave me a revelation, a vision. Night vision. Which is dream. The partner that told me that transaction didn't close. God showed me he entered the bank and ready to collect money. I said, it, I woke up. Hey, the devil is a liar. <laughs> God show me. He was in the bank and tried to make money. Transaction. I want to collect the money. And God showed me. Then I have a righteous and God. Oh, I'm going to go get him. Go talk to him. You know what God told me? God said, leave me alone. Oh, that was painful. That was, that was painful. I'm not talking hundreds of thousands. 
big transaction. God say what? Leave him alone. I was hard. But someone just see my eyes, see my face, say, are you going to leave him? Because <laughs> I was ready to go after him. We have to obey God. It doesn't matter how much. Guess what happened? So I'll tell you. Until this day, if I lied to you, he never collect the money. The money was <laughs> God's money. He didn't tell me. Years after, The golden rule in everything that you do. Do unto others as you want others to do to you. If you have honesty, integrity to others, nobody will cheat you. God will make sure he's stop it. Are you hearing me? Come on, are you hearing me? Then the last one is to give your tithe and offering to the house of the Lord to be free financially. Amen? And I will stop. I want us to pray. I'm supposed to give you another one. How to obtain financial freedom. Two ways. Write it down quick. Two ways to, to obtain financial freedom. Number one, through your annual work. <laughs> I know you think I want to give you a formula, big formula. No, work and work hard. You know what the Bible says? The Lord will bless the work of your hand. That's number one. Work hard and it will bless it. Amen. If there's no work, there's no blessing. It will bless the work of your hands. And number two, I love number two. God will give you finances through giving. The work of your hand, your business, whatever you do, do it diligently. The Lord will bless you. Number two, through giving. I know some people, they give their way out of death. And the Lord will bless you. Amen? Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Unless you have question for me, any question? Then I want to, do we have time to pray? I want to pray. But it has to be, in, it, relate, it has to relate to what I'm teaching, right? Mm-hmm. Good question. Did they? Good, like a flat tire. Can't break it down. I find the time I would teach this. Actually, I would give the formula how to do this. And you know what I'm saying? One of the reasons how to do that, that's why it's good to have savings. Also, in your budget, you can have what we call miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. You can see every paycheck, you want to put X amount of dollar aside for what? Miscellaneous. If nothing come up that month, that year, you can roll it over or you can add to it. That will be on the expenses, not from your saving. Amen? And also, another way, we find a time I'll teach practical teaching on all of this. We practice this. I practice it myself. I'm not telling you what I don't practice. Amen? I practice this myself. Even your saving, let me give you wisdom. Even when you have your savings and something happens, don't just draw it. You borrow it from your savings. You borrow it. And then, when money comes, you do what? You put, it's your money. 20%. 
Where do I get that 20% from? You remember, I have time to bring the prayer, but we need this wisdom. Joseph. Remember the story of Joseph? He told Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a dream. Remember? Seven big cow and the skinny one and the skinny swallow the big one and, and, and then, you know, it was still skinny. Remember? And Joseph interpreted the dream to Pharaoh. Remember what he said? He said there's a seven years of surplus and seven years of what? You have time? Seven years of what? And seven years of what? I truly believe God always prepare us before our ship comes. Joseph interpreted and said that within the year of surplus, what do you do? He said they should save how many? One fifth, right? One fifth of the income. What is one fifth? Twenty. No, twenty percent. One fifth in the year of surplus. Seven year of surplus. Take twenty percent and put it where? Save it. Because other seven years is coming. It's going to be tough. I always use that principle. Anytime I have money in my hand, I always put some percentage away. Sometimes that do more than 20, 40, 50, I put it. Sometimes I don't touch it. Because time is coming. You're going to need that money. 20%. You remember that? That's where Gary from. If you have a job now, it's a year of plenty. Church don't like talking about money. This is wisdom of God. 20%. If you can save more than 20, do it. Because it's a time. It's going to be needed. So good question. What you do, there should be in your budgeting, there should be expenses there that are called miscellaneous. In case something happens, you can take and use to do what we have to do. In relation, related to what I just preached, right? Yes. If I want? Not up to 20? Not up to 20? You can save. Say that again? Starting like what? Less than the 20%? I don't understand. Is that a month? The bank, you can only say certain amount? Oh. Okay. I will talk to you about that. Yes. Yeah, but even, even so, you have to follow the law, whatever they require, save that. Uh try to do, if they say you can only save $50 a week per month, do that. Amen. Remember also the Bible tells us we have to obey the law of the Yes, if that's what you can do, do it. A amen. That's the best way to do things. Obey it and do that. Alright? Question. Amen. Let us stand. Do you have any question for me? Time is well spent. Amen. I'm going to stop. We do fire prayer another time. Let me pray for someone here that want to. Uh, Planning to transition a new project, a new job, want something new for them. 
Pastor Michelle, you're going to come, come stand. I want you to transition. Especially now, I just thought, I said, or you want someone, uh, a job that has a future. Please pay attention to that. If you have a job that don't have future, try and get one with a what? Future. Not just to get you going. Amen? So that you can grow into that. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So new project, I mean, transition. New job. Amen. Let's lift up our hands to heaven. First of all, let's thank God, let's bless God and exalt his holy name. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to bless God. You need maybe job or business with a future that has future. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to thank God. Begin to bless God. Begin to exalt his name. Begin to magnify his name. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt your name. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you. We bless you, Father God. New project. Transition. A business with a future. A job with a future. Father, begin to thank him. Come on, let's begin to thank God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt your name. We give you praise and we give you glory. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. For God to give you. In the name of Jesus. Pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. So, Heavenly Father. Now, before I pray this prayer, I want you to know something. Whatever you want is already provided. No, don't clap yet. Don't clap yet. Don't clap yet. I'm not finished. Whatever you want, you trust in God for, is already provided. Now, we want God to open our eyes to see it. I truly believe that. It's already provided, but you have to find it. You have to see it. Amen? So let's pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. Open my eyes to see beyond visible and make invisible visible. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I know what I'm trusting you for. The new job I'm trusting you for. The job with future or business with future. I know it's already there. I cannot see it. But I know it. Because faith. Because faith. Cannot see. But faith knows. Faith knows. Faith knows. I know it's there. I believe it's there. But I cannot see it. But I know it. I know it. So, Heavenly Father, open my eyes to see beyond the visible and make invisible visible in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to lead me to open my eyes so I might see what you have provided for me. Open my eyes to see, O oh Lord, the same way you open Elijah's servant. To open Elijah's servants. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. 
Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to lead me, to direct me, to instruct me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because I am in transition and need a better job or business. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I promise as I get this job, I will pay my tithe, I will give my offering, and I will be a good steward. Heavenly Father, as I receive this job or this business, I know it's coming from you. The income belongs to you. You are the owner. I am the steward. Heavenly Father, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to provide it for me. To open my eyes to see it. To open my eyes to see it. Orchestrate, O oh Lord. Orchestrate my path in the mighty name of Jesus. And make this happen in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, say, Heavenly Father, let the spirit of favor be upon me everywhere I go in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, let the spirit of favor be upon me everywhere I go in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uncommon favor, unusual favor, let it be upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the spirit of favor come upon me now. Anywhere I go, concerning my finances, concerning my finances, concerning jobs, concerning businesses, concerning opportunities, in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 Heavenly Father, I ask you, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, to stand ministering spirits, to stand ministering spirit, to bring prosperity and funds into my finances, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth, I declare with my mouth, and it shall be so. Heavenly Father, help me to be a good steward. To be a good steward. You are the owner of everything that I own. Everything that I have. It comes from you. It belongs to you. You are the owner. I am a steward. I am a steward. I am a steward. Heavenly Father, teach me wisdom. Teach me how to be a good steward. Teach me how to be a good steward. In the mighty name of Jesus. 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 If there's any strong man, if there's any strong man holding my finances, holding my finances captive, I bang it in the name of Jesus. I bang it in the name of Jesus. Every strong man, every strong man holding my finances captives, I bang it in the name of Jesus. I bind you 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 in the name of Jesus. Power of poverty. Power of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus. Power of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus. Power of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus. Power of poverty. Come on, break it seven times. I break you in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus. Say power of poverty. Power of poverty. Power of poverty. Power of poverty. I break you in the name of Jesus. 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 Because Jesus came. Even though he was rich, he became poor so that I might be rich. I declare today, I am rich. I am blessed. I am rich. I am blessed. So you spirit of poverty, power of poverty, power of poverty, 
There's power in your mouth, so power of poverty. I break you under my Jesus. I break you under my Jesus. I break you under my Jesus. Come on, break it seven times. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break. You're gonna get that job. Break it. Break it under my Jesus. 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 I am rich. I am rich. I am blessed. I am rich. I am blessed. I rise, O Lord. I rise, O Lord. I rise, O Lord. And let every enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. Be scattered in the name of Jesus. Be scattered in the name of Jesus. I rise, O Lord. I rise, O Lord. I rise, O Lord. I rise, O Lord, and let the enemy of my financial breakthrough be scattered in the name of Jesus. 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 I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed of the Lord. I am blessed of the Lord. I am blessed of the Lord. Jesus paid the price for my prosperity. Jesus paid the price for my riches. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am blessed. 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 Father, I thank you for the new job. I thank God for the new business. I thank you for successful transition. For successful transition. In the name of Jesus. 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 Enemy. Against my fantasy, against my breakthrough, break! Come on, somebody begin to praise God. 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 La papa se ke tele, la papa so ko pasha, le se ke tele, le se ke te po, le se ke tele, le se ke tele be. Let's shake it till the Say this, Heavenly Father, put your right hand on your head. I'm telling you, it is happening. It is happening in the spirit realm. Lay your right hand on your head and say this. Say, O oh Lord of Elijah. Oh Lord God of Elijah, answer my prayer by fire. Answer me now in the name of Jesus. Answer me now in the name of Jesus. Answer me by fire in the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, anoint me to pray without season. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, say, Heavenly Father, anoint me. To pray without ceasing. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father. Anoint me. Anoint me. Without. Anoint me. Anoint me. To pray without ceasing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say Heavenly Son Father. Send help. From your sanctuary. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Send divine favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth that nothing shall be impossible with me. I declare with my mouth that nothing shall be impossible with me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, with bonus, Heavenly Father. Give unto me the key of good success. Heavenly Father. Give unto me the key of good success. So that everywhere I go, the doors of opportunities, the doors of prosperity will be opened unto me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Give unto me. Give unto me. The key of good success. The 
king of good sources. I want you to say, don't play, don't play. I'm going to continue. I want you to say that too. God brought you to America to bless you. So say it. Amen. Say it. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, give unto me, give unto me the key of good success. The key of good success. So everywhere I go, prosperity, door of prosperity will be open unto me. Doors of opportunities will be open unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, make me a kingdom financier. Make me a kingdom financier to sponsor, to sponsor the work of the kingdom of God. So Heavenly Father, oh, don't get tired. Say Heavenly Father, say Heavenly Father, say Heavenly Father, give unto me the key of good success so that everywhere I go, the doors of prosperity be opened unto me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare with my mouth, yeah, I declare with my mouth, I declare with my mouth that nothing shall be impossible with me. In the name of Jesus, I declare with my mouth, I declare with my mouth that nothing shall be impossible with me. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare with my mouth, it shall be so, it shall be so. The Bible says we shall declare a thing and it shall, de- it shall be established. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I declare in the name of Jesus. I declare with my mouth, nothing, 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 nothing shall be impossible with me in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, anoint me, anoint me with the Holy Spirit to break every yoke of backwardness. Every yoke of backwardness, break it. Every yoke of backwardness I break it in the name of Jesus say Heavenly Father yeah. say Heavenly Father Heavenly Father let the anointing of the Holy Spirit break every yoke break every yoke break every yoke of backwardness in my life in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus say Heavenly Father say Heavenly Father Anoint me with the power of the Holy Spirit to break every yoke of backwardness. Of backwardness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare with my mouth, backward never, forward ever. I declare with my mouth, backward never, forward ever. Come on, speak those sound. No, speak it, speak it. Oh my, speak it, speak it, speak it. Speak it. Say, Heavenly Father. Say, Heavenly Father. Listen to me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit break every yoke of, of backwardness. There's a yoke of backwardness must be broken. Must be broken. Must be broken. So I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it in the name of Jesus. Come on, break it several times. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it, break it, break it, break it. Yoke of backwardness. Say yoke, yoke. Look at me, look at me. Say yoke of backwardness. I break you in the name of Jesus. Yoke of backwardness in my life. I break you in the name of Jesus. I break you in the name of Jesus. I break you in the name of Jesus. I break you. Seven times break it, break you, break you, break it, break it, break it, break it, break it. Say this, Shaka Boko Bashakata, Matakopa Shakata. Say this, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit break every yoke of backwardness in my life in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, give unto me. Give unto me the key of good success so that everywhere I go, the doors of prosperity will be open unto me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, the Lord God of Elijah, answer me by fire. The Lord God of Elijah, answer me by fire. Answer me by fire. Answer me by fire. Answer me by fire. Answer me now. Answer me now. Where I'm standing right now. Answer me, Lord. Answer me speedily. Answer me speedily. Answer me quickly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I believe. I believe. It is done. I believe. It is done. It is done. I'm expecting. I'm waiting for it. This is the year of manifestation. It shall be so. I say it shall be so. I say it shall be so. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am rich. I am making it. I am making it. I am making it. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody begin to bless God. 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 Come on, somebody begin to thank God. Come on, somebody begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 In the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. La ba 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 ko ba sha sha. Le be 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 ko to ba ba ba. Le be be ke tele kia. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Come on, are you tired? Begin to bless him. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt you. Come on, thank you for miracle that is coming. Thank you for miracle that is coming. Come on, thank you. Say, Lord. Say, Lord. Say, Heavenly Father. Dispatch your angels to rule away every stumbling block to my promotion, to my breakthrough, to my finances. In the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. Oh God, I have something here for you. We got to go. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Let the anointing to excel. Let the anointing to excel. To come upon me. To manifest in my spiritual life. And my physical life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Lord. Say God, say Yahweh, let the anointing to excel in my spiritual and physical life to follow me now. Anointing to excel. Everything that I do, I will excel in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, say, Oh Lord, restore all my wasted years. Yay. Say, Lord, restore all my wasted years in the name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, restore all my wasted years. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, restore all my wasted years and effort and convert them into blessing. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Say, oh Lord, Heavenly Father, restore all my wasted years and effort and convert them into blessing. Blessing upon blessing. Favor upon favor. Oh, somebody bless God. Come on. Come on. Praise God. You receive your breakthrough. Receive your breakthrough. Receive, I declare. Receive your blessing. You will come with testimony. 
You will come. You will come with testimony. 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 Come, let me jump in. Testimony. Breakthrough. 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 Yes. Breakthrough. Give me a five. Breakthrough. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We will continue this week. In Jesus' name. We need fire prayer. The enemy cannot stand fire prayer. In the name of Jesus. Man, I love this for you, you know. Heavenly Father, restore all my wasted years and effort and convert them into blessing in Jesus' name. Can I give you an example? Peter went into the deep. The Bible didn't tell us how long he was fishing for. He was fishing, 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 looking for fish. There was no fish. Then when he came in the morning to the shore, Jesus showed up. He said, put it back a little bit in the ocean. And Jesus preached. And Jesus told them, throw your nets into the deep. All his effort for 8 hours, 12 hours, 5 hours, 6 hours, we don't know how long. Within a few minutes, it was converted into blessing. Overflowing. So shall it be for you. I say, so shall it be for you. I say, so shall it be for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, anoint them. With the Holy Spirit. Give them a breaker anointing. Do you know what's a breaker anointing? That breaks the yoke. That yoke of backwardness. Be released upon you now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Come on. Let's clap our hands and give God praise. We have to come to. We got to finish. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to take offering. Next week we're going to continue within this fire prayer. And Ooh. Time to give. Uh, ways to give. Next week, we're going to continue to pray the fire prayer. More prayer. More prayer. More prayer. Amen. Ways to give. Let's put it on the screen. For those that are viewing online as well, we want you to give. Amen. It is blessed to give than to receive. Remember the teaching? One of the ways to get financial breakthrough. Uh, uh, is also for freedom is to be faithful and pay our tithe and the offering. Amen. Even for those, I know a lot of people are online. They can't make it to church. You know, Sunday, we always have a full house on Sunday. But you are there. Let's give our tithe and our offering. Let's continue to be faithful to God. Amen. If you want God to bless you, you have to be a what? A good steward. Remember the principle of what? Ownership and stewardship. Can we say that? Ownership and stewardship. Who is the owner of everything that you have? Everything comes from God and belongs to God. Amen. What God wants back is a 10% to give to his church, his kingdom on earth. Amen. Let's continue to be faithful and give those that are online. Also, let's give time to give. Amen. And I promise you, as you give, you pay your time, give your offering, this God is going to bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, He won't allow spirit of backwardness. Amen. He will not allow it. Allow it. Amen. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are moving forward. Backward never. Forward ever. Glory to God. And as you pay your time, give your offering, we will use it to what? To maintain this place. Isn't this a good sanctuary?
Amen. We have offices. We have conference room. We have classroom. Offices there, you know. It's just the beginning. Actually, we are restarting. Amen. We have cafe over there. Even as, uh, on Facebook, I saw our, our, our the two ladies that are in charge of the cafe. Now, we can pre-order. If you want curry gold or oxtail, that's something. Amen. Pre-order. I'm like, whoa. He helps you see cafe. How many have ordered? Ah, ordered, ordered, ordered. Wow. Ordered. Wow. We need to order. Everybody should order. Amen. It's okay. If you cannot eat it, just give it to me. I'll bless it and eat it. Amen. That's how we do to support. It's a form of donation, you know, to help the church. If you have an order, it's deadline now. Uh, Shereen, tomorrow at what time? That's good. I'm very encouraging. I saw that on, on Facebook. I thought, wow. Yeah, big time. Glory to God. That's nice. Let's order, you know, and uh, just to support what we are doing here. Also, remember the $20 we were given at the hotel. Let's continue to do that to help us maintain this place. This is Colombia. Colombia is expensive. I mean, know that. Colombia is expensive. We have to pay here and maintain this place. Amen. And that's why God will bless you. As you give, this will help us to continue to preach the gospel. Glory to God to pray for people. Do you know how many people have received healing and deliverance in this ministry? Do you know how many? I can't even count them. Just that I don't I don't like to big it up too much. Maybe we're gonna get somebody marketing to, to do that for the glory of God. Many healing, deliverance. It's like it's ongoing in this church. It's normal. It's normal here. Healing, deliverance. I think Shireen gave the testimony about the night, night blindness too. I remember in India, that sickness is common in India. Anybody been, been to India before? Yes. Very common. What I also see common, God heal them. If I go there, preach. Also, what is also common is deafness. Very common. They come, they can't hear, you know. Some of these days, when I go there and preach, you know, some of them, most ministers pray for healing. I don't pray for healing. I don't start with healing. I pray for deliverance. That's what they need. That's why some of them don't receive healing. I don't start with healing. I pray deaf and dumb spirit. Bind it. In other words, you are improper, you are unlawful. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Then lay hands and pray for healing. Boom, boom. God just touched them and healed them all. They were blind. Legally blind. Healed them all. Amen? Amen. So let's support the ministry. You have your time and offering. Way to give. Everlasting life. CC. That's cash out. Dollar sign. Everlasting life. CC. So, amen. I won't rush. I will wait a little bit. Those that are still giving, website everlastinglife.org slash give. You can give through that. Also, PayPal and PayPal and Zelle finance at everlastinglife.org. Let's give and support. Also, the $20 that we are giving, we call it building fund now. Building fund. Let's also give that as well. Anybody need envelope? We all have envelope. We're giving online. I'm going to dismiss so we can go. We're going to continue this prayer, this kind of fire prayer. Next week, it shall be breakthrough. Amen. It shall be. Hmm. Restore. We pray that prayer. Amen. 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 Yeah, we pray for restoration. For God to restore. For God to restore your wasted years, your effort to restore your business. Amen. Glory to God. 
something, man. I'm going to let you go. We're going to dismiss as we give in. I want to pray after the service. People got to go. If you're the one, I want God to restore. You have a distance before went down. You want God to restore it. After the service come, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you and God will restore it. God will restore it. Amen. We have grace for business. I may know that. Grace for business. We pray. Touch and agree with you. God will restore that. Amen. Amen. Let's bring our offering. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise and glory. We have thought, I have thought that you are the owner. We are just the steward. Father, as they come in as a good steward, come in to pay their tithe, give their offering for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Father, I pray and I ask you in Jesus' name to bless them exceedingly and abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let opportunities come their path in the mighty name of Jesus. As they seek you, opportunity will come. As they seek you, blessing will come. As they seek you, favor will come. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Mighty God, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt your holy name. Give you praise for today's service. And know you've done great things today. Father, thank you for the manifestations that they will experience in the near future. Father, thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. I also seal everything that you've done by the Holy Spirit of promise in the name of Jesus Christ that no one would lose their blessing, no one would lose the favor that God has done, no one would lose restoration that God is doing in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, God will give us testimony in the name of Jesus that testimony will spring forth. Father, thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. And somebody shout,